Five years ago, I published my paper, A Model for the Geomorphology of the Carolina Base, in the peer-reviewed journal Geomorphology. I was worried that publishing on April Fool's Day would be a bad omen. I was completely surprised that my paper about the Carolina Base was published on the 1st of April 2017. Some people could have interpreted this as an April Fool's joke. Fortunately, the journal Geomorphology has a very good reputation and an excellent editorial staff. Everything is handled very professionally. The abstract of my paper says, Geometrical analysis of the Carolina base using Google Earth in combination with LiDAR data makes it possible to postulate that the base formed as a result of impacts rather than from aeolian and lacustrine processes. The Carolina base are elliptical conic sections with width-to-length ratios averaging 0.58 that are radially oriented toward the Great Lakes region. The radial distribution of ejecta is one characteristic of impacts, and the width-to-length ratios of the ellipses correspond to cones inclined at approximately 35 degrees, which is consistent with ballistic trajectories from the point of convergence. These observations and the fact that these geomorphological features occur only on unconsolidated soil close to the water table make it plausible to propose that the Carolina Bays are the remodeled remains of oblique conical craters formed on ground liquefied by the seismic shock waves of secondary impacts of glacier ice boulders ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet. Mathematical analysis using ballistic equations and scaling laws relating yield energy to crater size provide clues about the magnitude of the extraterrestrial event. An experimental model elucidates the remodeling mechanisms and provides an explanation for the morphology and the diverse dates of the base. The publication included LiDAR images of Carolina Bays and Nebraska rainwater basins showing that they could be precisely fitted with ellipses. The paper also included photographs of experimental impacts illustrating the creation of overlapping bays and the reduction of cavity depth by viscous relaxation. The Geomorphology Journal has a list of metrics showing 8 citations, 4 Wikipedia entries, and 49 social media comments. Of the 4 Wikipedia references, 2 are in Spanish. The Wikipedia article about the rainwater basins has a link to the journal article, but a link that previously was in the Carolina Bay's Wikipedia article was removed by the person who maintains the page. Of the eight journal citations, only two address the origin of the Carolina Bay's, and the rest just reference the use of LiDAR technology for exploring geomorphologic features. A paper by Lundin and Trembanis published in 2021 says that the Carolina Bays are enigmatic and widespread geomorphic features with an unknown origin, and that they are round, shallow, and sandy rim depressions. But a few lines later, the paper says that many people have argued without substantial evidence that the bays are meteoritic, comet, or glacial ice impact craters. In essence, Lundin and Trembanis do not acknowledge the elliptical geometry of the base, and they are not convinced at all that the Carolina base originated from impacts of any kind. The second citation to my paper was by Schetzel and four co-authors in 2019. This publication mostly objected to another paper that supported Saginaw Bay as an impact structure based on gravimetric data, but for good measure, these authors also stated their objections to my paper. Schetzel's paper says that long-established data clearly indicate that the Laurentide ice sheet had retreated from the Saginaw Bay region well before 12,900 years ago, and that the Saginaw lowlands would have been open water or dry land at this time. A meteorite impact onto an ice sheet in the Saginaw Bay area would have been simply impossible based on this timeline, and thus, such an impact could not have dislodged ice boulders that could then have been ejected to great distance to form features such as the Carolina Bays. These statements make it very evident that Schetzel and his co-authors do not recognize the Carolina base as impact structures. During the past five years, my paper has been cited eight times, and two of the citations dealing with the origin of the Carolina base have been negative. However, I don't lose hope that one day geologists will recognize that the elliptical structures in Nebraska and in the East Coast could only have been formed by oblique impacts that created inclined conical cavities. The fact that the elliptical structures are radially oriented like the ray system of an impact site give further support for the impact origin of the structures. In addition, the impact experiments on viscous targets can demonstrate the creation of inclined conical cavities and the reduction of the cavity depth by viscous relaxation that provide a good model of the Carolina base. 
I have no doubt that the questions of the kind of projectiles that made the base and the time of emplacement of the base will be solved eventually. I became interested in the Carolina base in 2013, two years after I retired, and the study of the Carolina base has been a very interesting retirement project for me. Thank you for joining me in the celebration of the fifth anniversary of my peer-reviewed publication about the Carolina base. Three years after I published that paper, I felt that the Carolina base were still not getting the attention that they deserved, so I wrote a book about the neglected Carolina base, which is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina base.